Hello, welcome to another work together. This is project one of my 12 projects of Christmas. Um, I will be putting together, I will be from today until the 24th, I will try to make 12 videos that I will post, um, post here on YouTube and they will be somehow Christmas related. They will be Christmas presents, they will be um, Christmas ideas, um, projects to make, st any sort of stuff like that. So our first one, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it, is going to be a little, a little folder, either, um, you could use it for putting in your Christmas shopping lists, filing those, you could use it for what I'm going to use it for, which is, um, it could be a file for photos to give as a gift, a nice way to hand them out as a gift, okay? So, let's go ahead and just get started right away. To start off, I'm using a manila envelope because the length of them is longer than 12 inches and that was what I could find that would be long enough. It comes to about 13 inches. If you do not have a manila envelope, you could always use a um, cardstock that you adhere two pieces together. That would work as well. Okay, but let's go ahead and get right to it. What you want to do is take your manila um, folder in the folded position and you're going to cut it to seven. Okay, the, the one that I'm making right now is going to be seven inches. So you're going to cut it to seven. And so your piece of paper that you're going to start with or your piece of folder is going to be seven by 13. Okay, then we're going to put it in our scoreboard and we're going to score it at three and a half, four, eight and a half, and nine. Okay, once you do that, then you are going to crease all your score marks. If you want, once you learn how to make this, if you want to change any of the measurements. It's quite easy. Um, you may want to make yours thicker so you can include more stuff in it. You may want to make it longer so you can include um, different stuff in it, longer stuff. Um, once you learn how, it's quite easy to just adjust things to how you want them to be. Okay, now you can see that where the folder folded on its own, it's going to want to fold up but we're going to cover that with pattern paper and that will help to stabilize it so that it won't fold up, okay? Once you crease all your folds, then the next step that you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of paper that is four and three eighths by six and three quarters and you want to put it in your scoreboard like this and you're going to score it at half an inch and seven eighths, okay? After you do that, then you're going to take, oops, I forgot to score these. Then you're going to take two pieces of paper that are three and a half by two. And these are going to get scored at half an inch, one inch, and one and a half inches. Half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches. And then you're going to fold these in a mountain valley type of fold. Okay. I'm just kind of do your best to make sure that they are even. And when you're done, you'll have an M that looks like that. Okay. Make sure that you use your bone folder or something to press it really well because you definitely want to make sure that it is pressed well. Okay, so we have two of those. Now what we're going to do is attach these to our pocket. This is the piece that was four and three eighths by six and three quarters. I'm going to run my adhesive along the edge here only 
before the fold. You do not want to go past the score mark there. Then I'm going to take my M that I have and I'm going to, this is the fold, I want to put the fold along the edge of my paper here. So I'm going to line this up with the top of my paper because it's more important that it matches up with the top than with the bottom. Unless you cut yours too big and then line it up with the bottom and you can cut some off. So I just lined it up, the fold with the edge, and then I'm going to press it down really well. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And then we're going to take our M again and match it up. We want the fold to match up with the edge of your paper. Once you have that, then use your bone folder and press it down really well. Okay? So now you have your pocket ready to go. The next step is to find a piece of patterned paper that you like for the inside. To do that, all I'm going to do, I'm going to completely cover this one section. From this score mark to this score mark, we want to cover that whole section and that will help this stay down. So I'm only giving it a very, very tiny border, like very minuscule border. And I'm just using my pencil to mark it rather than measure because I prefer to work that way sometimes. Okay. All right. So once you have that done, perfect. Okay. Once you've got that done, the next step is to take your tag here that you have, your pocket, I mean, and you're going to apply adhesive to the half inch flap that is there right to this bottom half, okay? Then we're going to take that piece and it's going to get applied directly to your back portion just above your score mark. It's going to go on the bottom because this is your pocket and you want it to go just above your score mark so that your paper can still fold properly. Okay? Once you do that, then you're going to take your pattern paper, adhere it, okay, and it's going to go right up here. And normally, if you have a pocket like this, you wouldn't cut a full piece of paper for the whole section, but that's we're doing that to allow it to help stabilize. And then we will also put a full piece on the back, and that will help so that it doesn't fold where we don't want it to. Okay, then... We're going to fold in our little tabs and place a strong adhesive. You definitely want to use a strong adhesive because it will um, it will be pulled tugged on a little bit because this is going to be the interaction of your pocket. Then I like to fold it up. And then I just kind of stick it down on its own so I can make sure what I'm doing is making sure that the same amount of paper is all the way visible all the way through. And then that helps it to be lined up. So there you have that. Whoops, let's fold this back so you can see 
this is our pocket and it is expandable because of the way that we attached it. And we also gave it a good three eighths of an inch down here. So we've got lots of room to make it what we want to make it. Okay. The next step is to create your tabs, which I've pre-done because they take a little bit. Create your tabs and we want to make them I cut my tabs at, what did I cut them at? Four and a half by six and a half. And then, and then the reason I chose that size is because I want to put four by six photos into each of the tabs. And so this will create a really good, um, these will be the dividers and I'll decorate them too. And then I'll write the names of the person the pictures in them or say if I was going to use this as my Christmas shopping list I would write the names of the person I was shopping for on the top and then I would <coughs> then I would put the lists inside or you know each section that you need to shop for and then maybe put the lists inside I decided that mine are just a little bit too tall, so I am going to just trim off a little bit of each one. And I used my envelope punch board to create the tabs. Just for a bit of interest, you do not need to have the tabs at all. It's just not something that's necessary. And then there we go. And now they fit in there. Perfect. Okay. So we've got our tabs in there. And we've got we just need to decorate these tabs, but oops, here we go. I want to round, I rounded the top corners after I punched the tabs. I also want to round the bottom corners just to keep it interesting. Whoops. And then I just take two of them and stick them in the front compartment and two of them and stick them in the back compartment. Okay, then our next step is we have a piece of paper that is four and a half. Oh, nope, that's not, I didn't write down the measurements for this one. This is going to be five by three and a half. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a little tab here and we're going to put some tags on either side so we can pull them out of both sides. Okay. If you want to just create one pocket, you could just put it right at the end and then have a pocket there. But I want to be able to pull out from both sides. So I'm going to do it this way. Okay. And I'm just going to eyeball it to the center there. And adhere it down like that. Okay. And then we would decorate it. And then we can take some tags and they can just slide one right in both sides. And then you can just pull them both out like that if you want to. Or you can just put pictures in there, whatever you want to do. 
or whatever um, Christmas lists. If you want to put Christmas lists in there, you can do that as well. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to round the corners on this top portion. And then we're just going to cover it on the outside. So I want this piece to be my outside. I'm going to just make a mark there. And <clears throat> make a mark there. And then cut it. And cut it. And then we're going to round the bottom of those corners as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And this is going to just apply right there to that part. Okay. So you can see it kind of coming together now. And we're going to use, you can use any number of things to adhere this to make it stay if you want to. You could um, put a ribbon from the back to the front that ties over here. You could use Velcro. You could use magnets. You could use, uh, what else could you, well there's really a lot of things you could use. What I'm going to use is um, magnets, but I'm also going to tie a ribbon around the front, but I want it to stay there. So I'm just going to tie it here and then I'll put the paper over here. But I'm going to go ahead and use some magnets here. And I'm going to use four of these tiny ones that I have. Two on each side. And I just need this should work. I just put my magnets down with washi tape. So I'm going to put them on the top portion first, kind of right about there, I think. All, all you need to do really is to make sure that where you place it will allow it to be covered because you want to cover it with your pattern paper. Then I put the washi tape upside down and I stick the magnet to the washi tape. Then bring it over to the other side and when you're using a box like this where it can close tighter and looser, you just want to make sure that when you seal it, it's right where you want it to be. And then, whoops, you just kind of press down right where the magnet should be to allow the washi tape to sort of stick to it and then open it up and stick it down. Okay, so just like that and then we're gonna do one more. I accidentally ordered these little ones because I thought I didn't look at the size very carefully. And I thought they were bigger, but they're teeny tiny, but they seem to do the trick. Okay, then put the washi tape upside down so the sticky side is up. 
whoops. Then drop your magnet on it. Once again, seal it to where it should be. And then just press firmly and that should allow the washi tape to stick and then you just have to press it yourself and then it will hold better once you put the pattern paper on there too. Okay. Then we're going to cover this bottom portion right here with some patterned paper. So we gotta find one that works with that. Like the way that looks. So I'm running out of tape here. If I remember, I like to go over the washi tape with my adhesive that I'm adhering the paper with too, just for a little bit of added benefit. Okay. There we go. Now it closes up nicely. We can cover this. And I want to put some, I'm just going to use some cream colored washi tape because my base is cream colored. I just want to tie a bow. This is simply for decoration. It's not going to have any purpose, so you don't need to do this if you don't want to. Okay. Oh, come on. Never fails on camera. You can't tie a bow. I think what I would do then is I would probably stick 
a little bit of uh, maybe a glue dot underneath there. It's not quite as tight as I would like it. Just going to redo it real quick. Oh, that was stupid. Oops, a little too tight now. There we go. Then a little knot. Sorry that took me so long. A little cut there and a little cut there. And then we seal it there. And I take a teeny tiny glue dot, which I have one right there, and attach it to the back of the bow, the knot area. And then all I'm going to do is, well, where'd it go? Oh, it didn't stick to the bow. Okay. Then I'm just going to stick it right there. Fluff my bow a little bit. And there we have it. There's my bow. Okay, then we take Okay, now it opens like this. Next thing we want to do is create a piece to fit in there. I think I'm going to do this one up here. No, I'm going to do this one down here. Just going to draw another pencil mark right inside of where I want to cut it. And then this again and this one. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll slide it in first because it will be harder to slide in. So that's what it's going to look like. Then I'm just going to apply some pressure here and put some adhesive there, turn it around, lift it, and plop some adhesive there. And now I have that covered. And yeah, I think I'm going to cover this with the same piece. I think it'll give it a little bit of interest. 
there'll just be a little border of the cream around it. So when there's not a tag in it, it might not look like there is something there, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. Okay. Just place it there so that it has an even border all the way around. Very interesting. There we go. Then it will allow you to slide things underneath there. And I think what I would do, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to use it just yet. Um, I do know that I'm going to put photos in here. I just don't know how I'm going to use this bottom part yet. But it'll come to me, I'm sure. Okay. Let's see here. Now. I think I'm going to cover the back of this with the red polka dot. Don't cover your spine, just remember that you don't want to cover the, you don't want to go over your score marks. Okay. There was the end of it. Bear with me one second. Oh no. That is not helpful. Adding this piece will also stabilize the main portion of our little, we might as well call it a little wallet. I think that's a good name for it. There we go. We got that and that and that makes for a nice little, just need to cover that. And then you also, you could cover these if you want to. I don't think I'm going to. I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'm giving this to my, I think I'm going to give this to my mother-in-law. And I'm going to put pictures of her three grandchildren in it. So I think what I'm going to do is, on each one that is for each grandchild, I'm going to um, maybe watercolor their name on it or something. Or somehow maybe stamp their name and then decorate the whole album or decorate the whole page with watercolors or something or stamps. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. 
but I know I don't want to cover those with pattern paper right now. So mine will be left plain on the inside. But you'll still get an idea of what it looks like. Okay. And then we're going to stick this. If you wanted to have more pockets, you could even add a pocket to the front of this pocket if you wanted to. You could add a pocket to the top flap if you wanted. And you could, instead of having the bottom be a belly band, you could very easily make that a pocket as well. A pocket, if this is something that you're going to carry around in your purse, um, a pocket may be more stable because with the belly band there will be things could fall out. But you could also fix that too. Say you wanted to make this, um, you wanted to keep this belly band but you didn't want your things to fall out. What I would do is before I adhered this piece of paper I would put another piece, another ribbon. And then after you put your stuff in, tie the ribbon into the front and that will help hold them from falling out the sides if you put this in your purse. Alright, and then we just have one more. We just have this top one to do. So I simply need to determine nah. I really do like it though. You know what? I'm going to. I like this one a lot, so I'm going to use it again. Okay. Just need to round the top corners and then this gets, make sure that you have your washi tape positioned how you would like it, or your, not your washi tape, I mean your, your ribbon, sorry. Make sure you have it positioned exactly how you'd want it because once you put this on, you won't be able to move it. Okay. Now when you seal it all up, the magnet should catch. Close it quite nicely. And then you have a lovely place to stick some whoops, some photos into and you can make it oh, I thought that would work You can make it as interactive as you want to, or you can make it could be an interact. Essentially, it's just an interactive photo album. In order to look at all the photos, you have to take them out. Okay, so now it's full of photos and still closes up nicely. Fits in there. Okay, and 
if you wanted to just trim your photo a tiny bit and even your photos could slide in there and you have another spot to hold some photos. And I think what I'm going to do is, because this is for my mother-in-law, I'm going to take one of the pictures that I have that will work. Let's see if I can find one. No. Here we go. I'll take this photo and I'll trim it down a little bit and put it right over the belly band there. And I think that'll look really cool. So anyways, you get the gist of it. And it is a fun way. You know what else you could do down here? You could just put the greeting. You could just pull out the greeting and it would make a nice little gift to give a card. You have a card and then a bunch of pictures if you wanted to. And also, the other thing that I did first when I first made it is I made the sides pull out much more. So if you wanted to be able to fit even more photographs in here. I mean, I could still fit more in here if I wanted to. I've got enough room. Let's see here. Let's just take a bunch of photographs there and a bunch there. And that's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. It still closes up good. That's about the max. So that's a good amount of photographs to give away. Let's see how many I've got in here now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31. It's 31 photos in here plus what I put here. I would say 30 photos and then maybe one or two here and you still get it to close nicely. So that's pretty good. And if you wanted to, like I said, you could extend your spine. You can make this um, three quarters of an inch instead of the size that we made it. Um, you could make it, you can make your pockets come expand, you know, expand a little bit more too. You could not even have the tabs if you don't want the tabs. You could just put the photographs in there, just like that. I kind of like the idea of doing the tabs because what I'll do is I'll do um, the three of them together, and then I'll do one for each individual picture. I'll put some individual pictures of each of the girls in the tabs, and then some of all three of them together in the tabs, too. So anyways, you could turn this into whatever you wanted to. If you have any questions, if my measurements were not clear enough, please feel free to send me an email or leave a comment. I tend to respond a little bit better to email, so um, if it's dire, send me an email. And I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Okay. Bye-bye now.